What's going on everyone? It's your favorite Maple Bench here and today I'm going to be doing a question and answer series. So ever since I started this YouTube channel about two or three weeks ago, I have gotten a lot of similar questions and so I thought I'd just make a video about those questions to help some people out with their shadow related issues and curiosities. So before we start with the question and answer, I just want to say thank you so much for helping this channel grow so quickly. I've gotten over 200 subscribers, almost 250 now, in a matter of like two or three weeks, which is crazy. So that's how I know you guys are enjoying the content. And if you want more specific videos, just let me know in the comments. And if you have more questions, I will make more question and answer videos such as today's video. So. The questions that I'm going to be going over today are mostly shadow related. So we have four shadow related questions and then one off topic question that is not specific to shadow. But the first question that we're going to start off with today is when do I use blood money versus pickpocket? This is the top question that you guys have been asking me. So ever since the remaster in Destiny, we've gotten this new skill called blood money and blood money basically works exactly like this skill pickpocket at first glance. So people are like, what's the difference? I don't know what's going on. So if you know what pickpocket does already, basically when you hit a mob while using pickpocket, your skill generates these meso projectiles on the floor. Then you can use this skill called meso explosion right here, which is you bound this to a key and then after you hit it, the mesos that get generated on the floor kind of fly everywhere, explode onto the mobs and then deal damage to the mobs. So pickpocket is a toggle. So I'm gonna turn on the toggle. Oh, I think it was Arian. So I turned on the toggle and that's how we get pickpocket on. You don't have to actively use a skill. You only use it once and then it's on. Blood money works exactly the same way. It's a toggle. However, it has some different benefits. So blood money, the main difference of this one is that blood money, the mesos that get generated on the floor, once you use meso explosion after you've generated blood mesos, those blood mesos are gonna target the highest HP mob in the vicinity. So let's say you're in a boss fight like Lucid. So that's why I'm in the Lucid room right now because we're about to go into easy Lucid practice mode just to demonstrate this. Let's say um, you're in the Lucid boss fight and she's spawning Gollum, she's spawning the mushrooms. However, your main goal is to kill Lucid. Your main goal is not to kill as many Gollums as you can. Your main goal is to just kill Lucid herself. And so, you want to optimize your DPS by making sure that all of your mesos that get generated by, you know, your attacks and the meso projectiles that fall on the floor, you want to make sure that all of those mesos after using meso explosion are going to target only Lucid. So Lucid is the highest HP mob in the vicinity. And so if you're using blood money, your meso explosion attack is only going to target Lucid herself. So let's go see this in the practice mode boss fight. So first I'm gonna demonstrate it with pickpocket, just regular pickpocket, I'm not gonna use blood meso. And you're gonna see that the meso projectiles that get generated are gonna attack pretty much all the mobs in the map. So you can see on the floor, after using assassinate a few times, I have mesos on the floor below lucid. And she just spawned these golems, and when I use meso explosion, you can see that I dealt damage to pretty much all three of these mobs, which are lucid and the two golems. So, that's cool, but I want to optimize my DPS, right? Like I want all the damage to go towards Lucid. And so how do I do that? You do that by generating blood mesos, by using blood money. So I've generated quite a bit of meso on the floor now, and you can see that there's two golems to the right of Lucid, and there's Lucid herself. When I use meso explosion, all of those meso projectiles hit only Lucid, which is really, really good. So, Ooh. There we go. I died, so I had to turn my toggles back on. So that's really good because it optimizes your DPS and makes sure that only the mesos are going to be targeting Lucid herself, and so it's going to make the boss fight feel a little bit quicker because your DPS is, DPS is a little bit more optimized. So I'm going to get out of the boss fight just for a second because we still need to explain one more thing. So the other huge benefit that Blood Money offers you is that it also grants you this thing called the Murderous Intent buff. So you can see over my head, since I'm using Blood Money, I have this little buff right here called the Murderous Intent buff. And you can see that on the top right. 
and you may be asking what's that i don't see murderous intent buff anywhere in my kit like where is that it's kind of hidden you have to read the skill description and so the most important part is here in the assassinate skill description it says on the bottom the last line Final damage increases by 50% when using a final blow that consumes the Murderous Intent buff. And you get this Murderous Intent buff by using Blood Money. You're not going to get this when you use Pickpocket. So you get a final damage boost to assassinate by 50%, which is massive. Final damage is just crazy. So since your main bossing skill is assassinate, you know, you're not using Cruel Stab, you're not using you know, your other skills like Midnight Carnival to do your main DPSs in a boss, you're using Assassinate. So since you're using Assassinate, you're going to want to be able to boost its damage as much, much as you can. And so using Blood Money is going to increase your Assassinate final damage by 50%, which is massive. So basically in bosses, I would just always recommend that you use Blood Money. When you're farming, you can use Blood Money if you want. However, I just prefer to use Pickpocket, especially in mobs or in maps that have mobs with um, two different kinds of mobs. So for instance, if you're farming in something like Shadow Dance Hall 3 in Moras, you have the blue shadows in the map, and then you have the red shadow mobs in the map. And basically, um, it's gonna just, pickpocket is gonna spread to every mob. However, Blood Money will target the highest HP mob. So if one mob has higher HP than the other mob, then it's gonna prefer to hit those mobs instead. So kind of complicated, but, if you want the too long didn't read version, blood money, bosses, pickpocket, farming, easy. Next question is how do I use the trick blade iframe? So we're going to go back into lucid and trick blade is a mobbing skill, but it's also a bossing skill. And today I'm going to be describing the bossing effect. So when you're in a boss fight, or hitting any mob with assassinate, look at, look at the top of the mob. You can see right here on top of Lucid that there is like a stack. It's like a little skull with two swords and then it has a number. That's these things called the stacks that you wanna pay attention to. And if you have three stacks on a mob, okay, so the way you add stacks is by using assassinate. So. You can see that you have I have three stacks in the mob now, and I'm gonna use the trick blade iframe. So after using the trick blade iframe, I teleported to the mob that had the stacks on it, and basically I got a two-second iframe after using that. And so it's really great for survivability. However, trick blade also does massive damage, and so you just want to use it, you know, anytime you can. So if you're even far away like this and use a, a trick blade you're gonna get that iframe and you're gonna move across the map to behind the boss which is really really helpful for survivability and it's also um just your one of your main dpsing skills because it's op it's up like every 20 seconds when you use it as an iframe and so it's just all around really good you can use this skill a lot of times you can also use it when you are using sonic blow so you can use sonic blow and then you can cancel Sonic Blow by pressing Trick Blade and you get that iframe. So those are the two ways that you use it. I know it may be a little bit complicated, but let's go into a little bit more depth as to how to use this. So I'm gonna go into a different boss. I'm gonna actually go into Balrog. Balrog, a lot of people never do this boss, but it's a good target dummy at the end of the day. So. I'm gonna apply the stacks to the boss. So you can see the stacks right here where my mouse is, I have three stacks there. And the way you apply a stack is by using the second blow of assassinate. So look at me use assassinate. You can see that I kind of did like a slash that was horizontal. And then when I press it again, I did like a vertical slash. So see that again, horizontal, press it again, downward. When you do that downward slash, which is like what people call the slam or the dunk, um, you apply the stack. So that's when you apply the stack. When you do the horizontal stash or slash, you do not apply a stack to the boss. It's only when you do that downward slash. So when you're on your shadow or next time, pay attention to the way assassinate operates. Just like click it, click it, 
click it and look at what it's doing okay so once you have three stacks on the mob that's when you can use trick blade as an iframe so the way you use it is you wait for your downward slash and after your downward slash you're going to want to just spam trick blade as fast as you can so horizontal slash no downward slash yes so my next assassinate is the downward slash so let's do it one two three downward slash trick blade oh i did it too slow okay that was my fault let's try it again you can see as you can see trick blade is like a mobbing skill when you're not using the iframe and so if you don't weave it properly you're gonna get that you know mobbing version so i'm gonna do it one two three I did the downward slash and then I spammed trick blade and that's when I teleported behind the mob and was able to get a two second iframe. So that was pretty cool. Let's try it again. Oh, I have to wait for the cooldown to come up for trick blade. It's up like every 20 seconds. If you have school skill cooldown reduction, then it goes down, but okay. I'm okay. I'm, it has three stacks now. I'm going to do the downward slash and then I'm going to spam trick blade right after that so you can see I teleported right behind the mob and then I got a little iframe so just practice that go into a boss fight and practice that trick blade is on a low cooldown in comparison to other classes iframe skills so you have a lot of chances to practice that in like a matter of minutes so let's try it one more time okay horizontal slash downward slash horizontal slash and then downward slash then trick blade there you go cool so I hope that was helpful. A lot of people find that really, really confusing. So yeah, how do I get out of here? I've never been to Balrog actually. I just know it's a good boss to demonstrate certain stuff. All right, so the next question is, how do you weave Assassinate and Meso Explosion? So Meso Explosion is a skill that is not macroable, so you can't just like macro it to assassinate. You have to actually weave Meso Explosion in between your skills if you want to be getting optimal DPS. And so there's this thing called Sticky Keys. If you don't know what Sticky Keys are, you just look up the options for Sticky Keys in your Windows. So I just press the Windows button, I type in Sticky Keys, and then there's an option there. I'm going to link a video to a Kana guide on Sticky Keys because I feel like that guide explains it a little bit more. The concepts are the same, however you're just using different skills, which is Assassinate and Meso Explosion. So when I turn on Sticky Keys, I can basically hold down Control and my Meso Explosion key, F, I have control, uh, Assassinate on Control and Meso Explosion on F. I can basically hold both of those keys down and Meso Explosion and Assassinate will activate pretty much at the same time and weave itself. So let's go into another boss fight. Gotta make sure I have Pickpocket on or Blood Meso, whichever one you're using. We'll put on Blood Meso just for demonstration purposes. Let's go into Lotus. So I have Sticky Keys on and as you're gonna see, I'm gonna be holding down Assassinate but mesos are still going to be exploded around me. So let's go into normal practice mode. So if I just hold down assassinate, you can see that the mesos are getting generated, but nothing's happening to them. You want to make sure that something does happen to them. And so you press meso explosion, right? However, I want that to happen like, you know, flawlessly. I turn on my sticky keys and then when I hold them down, when I hold the two skills down, you can see that they're activating at the same time. Meso Explosion and Assassinate. Like, it's pretty easy. I'm just holding down two buttons. I'm holding down my control key and I'm holding down my Meso Explosion key on F. So I'm holding it down, holding it down. And basically the skills are just activating at the same time. So that way I get the DPS from Assassinate, but I also get the DPS from Meso Explosion, which is nice. So you're gonna be wanting to weave Meso Explosion for your DPS and bosses, and so I like to use Sticky Keys because it just makes it easier. However, you can also just manually weave. So if you watch someone like Dubsley, I recommend you watch his stream for Shadower content. He basically manually weaves, and what that means is he presses Assassinate and then manually weaves. 
and you can hear me like doing a rhythm on my keyboard. I'm not doing it right, but that's what I hear when I watch Dub's Lee stream. He's always doing that rhythm. He just manually weaves it on his own. He'll press assassinate for a certain amount of time, then hit an SO explosion, press, hit, press, hit, press, hit, press, hit. However, I like to make things easier for myself, and I also haven't learned the new way of weaving manually post destiny. I don't know what the optimal timing is. And so instead of doing that, uh, 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 I just hold like, uh. so yeah, I just hold the two keys together by using sticky keys. So that's how I manually, or that's how I weave assassinate and meso explosion seamlessly. I just am holding down two keys while sticky keys is on. Okay. Next question is a farming question. So a lot of my friends who have been making Shadower, they're not doing the thing like I am where I'm doing a no totem progression. The reason I'm doing no totem progression is just because I like the farming style on Shadower because you get to rotate skills like Trick Blade and Shadow Assault more frequently instead of you know, just running across a map and just spamming Meso Explosion. I do not like that type of farming. And so I like to slow down my farming pace on a Shadower by not using a totem, using different maps. But a lot of my friends who have been making shadows have asked me what map should I farm at with the totem? And my simple answer there is just to follow a Kana guide. Shadowers and Kanas on totem can actually farm a lot of similar maps. So Kana, when we used to have Kishin, um, Kana preferred small compact maps where they can easily use all of their summons and not have a lot of movement. Um, so. For instance, Side Path used to be one of the most popular maps for Kana when Kana was like in its prime. However, Shadower can also really excel at this map because it's small, it's compact. You can basically just set Dark Flare on one spot and then you're just running around with Meso Explosion like on the bottom of the map. And you can make really, really good rates. And since Shadowers have that 20% extra Meso, you're gonna be you know, also getting the benefit from that as well. So I would just say, if you're gonna farm with Shadower on a totem, look for small compact maps with like high mob spawn rates and follow basically what Kana's used to do. You can look up guides from before the Kishin nerf on Kana farming and you can see what all the popular maps were. So Occupied, or no, Outlaw Street 2 is really, really popular for Kana and Actually, there have been some videos that have been showing up lately on YouTube where Shadowers have been farming this map and making like over a bill mesos. So just look at the Kana farming guides and then basically copy that. So I would copy that here, Outlaw Street 2. I would go to Side Path if you want lazy but good rates. That's a really nice map. In Morass, not a lot of Kana's actually really farmed there. However, when you got to Asphera, Kana's like to farm at MTS3, Mirror Touch C3. That's actually pretty good for Shadower as well. And in Moonbridge here, this is a good map too because it's really, really small. My friend, I think it's like one bill per hour rates when he's using a Wealth Potion and Legion coupon and a Totem here. And it's a small compact map with lots of mobs. So look for small compact maps where pretty much like Kana's would farm. Big maps on a totem for Shadower isn't as good because you're not going to be able to keep up with the mob spawn rates. However, big maps for a Shadower off totem is actually way better. So on totem, go to smaller maps. Off totem, go to bigger maps. Now, the last question is not so much Shadower related, but I've gotten this question quite a bit. And it's how do I get so many node stones? So in my no totem progression series, you guys saw me using... 2,000 nodes almost on my baby shadower. I actually use like almost 1.5k on that character. However, a lot of people are like, dude, how did you get so many node stones? That's crazy, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know what? It's just a blessing for me having an old account. I've farmed on my Kana, which is this character right here. I'll show you on my Legion board. I've farmed on this Kana forever. This has been my main character since the beginning and I've gotten it from level 200 to 280 in the past two years. And so this was just my main source of money. It was my main, my main source of node stones. And so on the way grinding at level 280, obviously when I maxed out my Kana's nodes herself, all of those nodes that I 
thought while farming up to level 280 in, you know, Limina and in Grandis. I basically just hoarded all of those node stones. And so when I made it, when I made my second character, this Shadower, my Leopard Print, I got it to level, you know, 250. And on the way to 250, I made a bunch of node stones. And so I was able to farm node stones on this character. And so I just got a lot of my node stones by farming on secondary characters. If you're going to be a new player in this game, obviously you're not going to have that luxury. And so you're just going to want to farm as many node stones as you can get when you're training and then use your node stones along the way. However, I would also encourage you to take advantage of event shops like the one we have today because event shops actually sell node stones there. And I think it's a really good investment for someone who is new to the game to purchase those node stones because node stones are very, very valuable sources of damage for an early game player. Another thing I would recommend is when you're early game, I would recommend you focusing on getting drop gear. So you can see that like a accessory like this, a pendant, I have item drop rate plus 20% on there. That's really good because the higher your drop rate is, the more node stones that you're gonna get when you're farming. And so just try to get as much drop rate as you can. You can get drop rate from your accessories. You can get drop rate from your inner ability. Like I have right here, I have item drop rate plus 10%. I also have a familiar that I open it's an epic familiar that increases item drop rate and you can get that from familiars. If you don't know much about familiars, you basically open these and fuse them and open them, blah, 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 to get random effects. However, if you want more drop rate in the early stages of the game, you're probably gonna be farming in a place like this when you're grinding to level 200, like Fez 2. Let me get a hyper teleport rock actually so that way I can go to the map and show you where a good spot to farm familiar cards is. So familiar cards are really valuable in the early stages of the game when you're at like a map like Fez 2 because Fez 2 drops rare familiars. Let's see. Let me show you real quick. Someone is probably gonna be here, but let's go to another map. Let's see if we can get one to drop. Hopefully we can. I have a back pet, so I kind of don't know when things drop sometimes. <laughs> but anyways, you're gonna kill mobs like this. They're gonna drop familiar cards. When they drop a familiar card, you're gonna wanna open it. And the ones you're gonna wanna open are these blue ones, the ones with the blue outline. So you open it, and then you add it to your familiar list. And then in your collection here, you're gonna see that you have a familiar here. So, oh, okay, cool. You're gonna click on it in the info tab, and then you're gonna open up a random ability. So it says, okay, when you have this familiar summoned, you get defense plus 12 and defense plus 12. So that kind of sucked, but let's open two more just for fun. These blue ones, the ones that have the blue outline here, Kind of hard to see, but if you see it in the little UI here, you can see that they have blue outlines. The ones with blue outlines are called rare familiars, and when you open rare familiars, you have a chance to get a line called increase item drop rate, which is the one that I have here. You can get this on an epic familiar as well, increase item drop rate. The goal is to get increased item drop rate by a large amount. However, you can't get them from the rare or blue familiar cards. And so just open a bunch of blue familiar cards if you can get them, try to farm them here like in future Perion because they drop sometimes and if you happen to get increased item drop rate by a large by increased item drop rate not by a large amount but just increased item drop rate then just use that when you train so that way you can get more node stones so yeah basically have a good drop rate spend in the event shops and farm on secondary characters for more node stones that's basically the advice i can give you if you're new to the game you're just going to be training and when you train, you'll get your node stones. You probably won't even max your node stones until you're like level 250 as you're training when you're early stages in the game. So that's basically the video. That was my top five questions for this video. As you guys give me more comments and questions, I will make more videos. And so if you want to see this series progress, keep on asking questions. Asking questions is the key to succeeding in this game. I'll see you later, bitch.